Hi, this is Miss Lou, and today we're going to be talking about the Photopea brush tools. If you've used Photoshop before, you'll probably notice that Photopea's brush tools are very similar, and you'd be able to pick this up very quickly. However, we're going to take this tutorial as if you've never used the brush tools before. In the, op in the toolbar of Photopea, you'll notice the brush tool is located kind of close to the center. If you hold your mouse down, you'll notice other tools in underneath, but we're going to be using the brush tool today. In the options bar, you'll notice some different things that you can use to affect your brush. The first one I'd like to show you is the brush menu. In the brush menu, you'll notice that you can change the size of your brush. You can change the softness or hardness of your brush. You can even change the style of your brush. Now at 100%, the brush basically looks like, um, you know, you have a very thick blob of paint and you'll notice the edging is very, very sharp. Now let's see what happens as we go down. So this is 74% hardness, 46%, 21%, and 0%. So you'll notice it basically looks like as it goes along with the brush being softer and softer, it looks more like the paint is diffused on the, around the edges and it gets a little bit blurry. This menu is very useful, but it also is very difficult when you're in the middle of painting something. So if you're painting here and you want to change your brush size, you'd have to stop painting come back up to this menu, change the size, and then keep painting. So I wanna show you a little shortcut. On your keyboard, you have the letter P. If you click the bracket that's right next to the letter P, the one that's on the left, you'll notice that your brush gets smaller and the one on the right makes your brush bigger. So the bracket on the left makes it smaller, right makes it bigger. Blend mode, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about what each one of these does because part of the fun is kind of experimenting, but basically it does affect when you layer your brush on top of each other, it affects that. So for example, if I were to click screen, you'll notice that it only affects the brush stroke that I had before and it does not affect anything around it. Opacity, we've already talked about, um, refers to the uh, see-through see quality or solid quality of something. So in this case, your opacity at 100% would be pretty solid. And then if your opacity is lower, you'll notice that it's barely there. What's great about that is you can overlap your brush strokes and you could get a little bit darker in some areas, but then keep the other areas kind of see through. Flow reacts kind of like in the same way, but it's almost like if you noticed right there, it was like, um, if you use a ballpoint pen and the paint isn't coming out completely smoothly, that's kind of what flow affects. Um, smoothness, I really wouldn't bother with. And then these little tools right here are more, a little bit more geared towards if you're using a tablet to paint. So we're not going to really cover that. The other way that you can affect your brush besides this brush menu is by coming over to the brush palette. So when you click the brush palette, automatically you're on tip shape. So you can change, um, you'll notice very, very similar settings to what was over on the options toolbar. The only addition to it is you can affect how round or square your brush is. You can also um, change the spacing. So if you didn't want your brush to be solid as you painted through, the other settings, again, are a little bit more specialized, a little bit more advanced, so we're not going to really cover that right now, but you can kind of see if you wanted to play with it and just see what it does, um, there's nothing wrong with that. 
So when we're painting, we're never going to just paint with one color. So I'm going to show you how to change your color. In the toolbar, your palette is right here. You've got foreground color and background color, which are those two boxes. When you click on the box, it comes up with the color picker. And this rainbow bar right here, if you drag that white line, it allows you to change the color. This big box right here allows you to change the tint, tone, or shade that you would like. And you'll notice as, as I'm picking colors, um, this is the original color here, and then this shows the color that you might be choosing. That way you can see if you think it looks well together, or if you wanted to choose a very, very close color with just a little bit of difference, you could kind of play around and, and see the difference there as well. Now, if I choose the background color, it really doesn't affect the brush itself. So let's see, I have two colors there, but if I paint right now, only the first brush is going to show. To get the second color, you just click on this little arrow right here, and you can see the two colors flipped. Whoops, change the opacity. There you go. Now, if you want true black and white again, instead of trying to go to the color picker and trying to find black and white again, just click on the black and white icon right next to it, and you'll have true black and white again. So the last thing I want to show you is how to change your brush styles. So there are some preset fun brushes to play with. You notice I have a lot that you might not have, and that's because I've added these brushes in the past. So to add brushes, what you would do is you click on this little tiny down facing arrow, and you want to go click on load ABR. So brushes for Photoshop and Photopea come in an ABR format. And you'll notice that some ABR formats have been provided for you to use, so feel free to use any one of them. You're going to need to save the file, and then when you find the one that you would like, just click on it, open it, and it looks like nothing happened, but if you click on your brush menu again, you'll and you scroll all the way down, you'll notice new brushes have appeared. New brushes added always show up on the bottom of your menu. So right here I've chosen some grunge brushes and you can see what that looks like. If you want to delete a brush that you've uploaded, you'll have to click on the brush, right click on it and hit delete. So it's a little bit of a pain, but you'll have to delete each brush one by one if you don't want that brush anymore at all in this panel. You can always re-download it or re-upload it onto Photopea if you would like. So that concludes our tutorial on how to use Photopea brushes. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask and thank you for, for watching.